Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tips, tools, and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I have guest Gregory Ann Cox. Greg is a certified life and weight loss coach, keynote speaker, and host of the Rebellious Wellness Over 50 podcast. For more than 30 years, she has invested countless hours in learning about all aspects of women's health, from hormones to thyroid to genetics and alternative options for healthy aging. Now in her mid-60s, Greg has been providing tips, truths, and strategies to help women navigate the changes that come with aging. Welcome, Greg. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Tonya, thank you so much. I'm really glad to be here. So modern society does a really good job of painting a picture of what aging is supposed to look like, right? It's supposed to look like struggle, poor health, pain, relying on the system. And I personally call all of that BS, belief (laughs) systems. And that's what we're going to talk about today is aging all in the mind and how our mindset helps or hinders our health. So Greg, I was listening to a few of your podcasts and like you, I believe that Western medicine is great as emergency or acute care, but it's not really something to rely on for our daily healthcare um, issues, I guess. And so I believe that self-care is healthcare. And having worked in the healthcare field for more than 15 years, I saw a lot of frequent flyers. I saw pharmaceutical (laughs) abuse. (laughs) And I also saw the reliance on the advice of uh, others outside of ourselves Mm. to give us our own uh, healing advice. And so I'm a firm believer that it's up to us to figure out what works best for our bodies, listen to our own intuition, and then if appropriate, finding the right practitioners to support us, whether that's Eastern or Western medicine or a combination of both. And so, Greg, you talk about being rebellious with your health. And I love that. I love the word rebellious. And so what do you mean by being rebellious with your health? Uh, About what you just said, when you said that it's up to us to decide what works for our body. Now, not everybody is that attuned to what their body's telling them. So I want everybody to listening who might have just said like, I don't know how to figure this out. Don't <laughs> worry, we're going to help you. Yes. But to answer your question, I feel like it's a rebellious, um, it, you have to be rebellious in this day and age to age the way you want to age. Because as you mentioned, the system has a setup for us. I call it the cradle to grave yeah. system, right? They start you on baby formula, then you get a lot of shots. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm simply saying it starts very young that we begin to rely on these external sources for our health, called it our health. And yet since the 1980s, when the low fat craze got started, our nation and pretty much around the world has gotten heavier, which is not such an issue unless it brings with it diseases, lifestyle diseases. Many, many women especially are struggling with heart disease, diabetes, Heart disease goes hand in hand with diabetes. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is in order to age the way you want, if you go to a doctor, this happens frequently, your blood sugar is high or your blood pressure is high. Many people will say, we want to give you a statin. We want it. You're pre-diabetic. We're going to put you on insulin. Your, Your cholesterol is high. We're going to put you on a statin. But you might have read or heard from somebody that those have side effects and you don't want to necessarily have those. So you have to take a stand and be willing to say, sometimes you bring information and back it up. Maybe you read a book from a doctor who said diabetes is reversible. Great. Not every doctor has time to listen, unfortunately, but if you can go in with a, with a reasonable amount of science or an understanding of what your condition is and say, I want to try my lifestyle changes for the first six weeks, give me six weeks to do this on my own. But that is an act of rebellion because I have been in the doctor's office with people when the doctor is saying, no, I think you should go on a statin. I really don't. Well, then what do you do? Most people will back down and rightfully so, because the doctor knows best, right? They're the one in the lab coat. So that's what I mean by being rebellious. It's really just standing up for how you want to experience your body and your aging. Yeah. And it's having courage to do that. I know, you know, I've been kind of coaching my parents a bit. They're in their early seventies and, uh, 
my dad, he suffered with prostate cancer, Lyme disease, and Epstein-Barr. He's a firm believer oh. of uh, the medical medium, Anthony Williams, because that's his um, protocols have really helped him turn things around. Well, the funny thing is he goes into his doctor's offices now with that book <laughs> <laughs> and he shares information. And honestly, some of the doctors have been very open to receiving that information. And some of them have actually bought some of those books. And so oh, funny. I said, dad, you're kind of bucking the system a little bit, you know, you're being <laughs> rebellious with your health. And so it's kind of funny that, uh, you know, you, you brought all of that up because I literally think of my parents and how they've been, you know, I've been doing this the, the whole time I worked in healthcare, I was bucking the system. I was like, Hey, <laughs> let's look at this from a different perspective, but it's neat to see, uh, you know, your parents doing that or, yeah. or loved ones doing that. And so, uh, you know, Greg on your podcast, you talk about the power of five and how just five simple habits can pave the way to better health. Can you talk a little bit more about what the power of five is? Is. Sure. And I want people to listen for what is common to the five and you, not what may not sound like you. So people say, well, I'm keto or I, you know, fast for 16 hours. I can't do this because there's no, I can't in the power of five, because it just means you have to adapt it to yourself. So here are the five things. And it's more like a circle than it is an ascending or lateral thing, because one thing aids or abets the other to do to be better right the the number one thing and i had to put this as the foundation after i started to study sleep science and the first thing is sleep figure out what it takes to get a good night's sleep and i have started wearing my fitbit to bed uh, which i didn't think i was going to like now i don't even notice it because it does a decent job tracking deep sleep and rem and then of course light sleep and when you're awake I didn't realize how little deep sleep I was getting compared to what I would like to get because I feel like, yeah, I slept okay. But sleep is so important to every single thing. And Dr. Jeff Walker, who's one of the experts, there are many, uh, talks about how one night of interrupted sleep or not sound sleep affects the hormonal uh, cascades in our body, how we think, whether we crave certain foods or not. And it builds for people that are stress stressed individuals who don't sleep well, they either have a problem falling asleep or the problem staying asleep. If you're relying on medication to sleep, I would really encourage you to do something to get off of that because they're very dangerous. They really are over the magnesium. long term. Magnesium has excellent for me. Uh, I've been taking that and um, I don't really need it anymore. But when I was having a hard time sleeping, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on my website, or I mean, you can certainly Google help help me get to sleep. You know, there are so many different things and it really is, this is where you have to listen to your body to see what works. Mm -hmm. And don't try nine things at once. <laughs> this is the same with the food. If you want to figure out what food's bothering you, don't eliminate 12 things at once. <laughs> Just do, you know, a couple, maybe get some lavender, try some magnesium. Mm -hmm. If the light's bothering in your room, find, it, find out a way to block out or use an eye shade. I've been using an eye shade for, gosh, I don't know how many years. And I, I even, I if I don't, I don't put it on when I first go to sleep, but I wake up with it. So at some point in the night, I must sense that it's starting to get light around the edges. So the other, th the other three things, the first one is fall in love with fat. And I know that there's still a lot of negative talk about fat, but then we have healthy fat. And I'm here to tell you that saturated fat is not evil. And that all uh, the only things that I would say are not necessarily evil, but not healthy for us are seed oils. Yeah canola oil, corn oil, peanut mass manufactured oils, many of them are bleached and deodorized because they don't smell good. Mm -hmm. So right off the bat, we're starting with a chemical compound that is not to, found in nature. Yeah. Whereas an avocado oil, olive oil, those kinds of things are much safer. And fat, if you think about sustained energy, we all want to feel good during the day. We don't want to have slumps. Well, sometimes when people are not eating enough fat and or protein, which is number three, you find that you have these dips. And if you think about building a fire, when we want to start a fire, we want a lot of hot, fast heat. So we put kindling and maybe newspaper at the bottom and we get it going. That's like your sugar and your carbs, your very high dense carbohydrate foods. They're like the fire gets started right away. It burns really quickly and then it burns out. Fat and protein are the big logs. You have a little bit of the fast fire and then you put those logs on and they burn slowly, just like your energy will be throughout the day. It'll be sustained. So fall in love with fat and eat protein at every meal and snack. 
Now, one thing you might notice in nature, fat and protein often go together. Mm -hmm. Think nuts, fish, meat, dairy products, they're together. So we tend to like think of macronutrients, protein and fats and carbs, but really just eating some foods that are naturally healthy and full of nutrition and fat and protein, especially for women, because women are notorious, notorious bad protein getters. So, <laughs> and the other one is learn to balance your blood sugar. Again, no science degree needed. It just means start to listen to your body. If you eat food, you find that you're very tired right after. You've had too much of something. Chances are it could be carbohydrate. Not saying it always is. But if you find yourself falling asleep at four in the afternoon, you're having a, a dip, or if you're craving food throughout the day, you have an imbalance in your blood sugar most likely. It probably goes up too high, doesn't come back down. And a lot of times people that eat throughout the day, six small meals used to be a great recommendation. Now we know it's not such a great recommendation for everybody. Now, again, there are people that tend to have low blood sugar. Don't listen to what I'm saying. Eat six meals if that works for you <laughs> or snacks, right? And everything we're saying here is, again, you have to know what is healthy for you. That's why people say everybody should do intermittent fasting. I don't believe that. I just had my genetic profile done. Intermittent fasting is only so-so for me. Mm -hmm. I can do like a 12 hour window, but 16 to 20 hours in a day would not be healthy for me. So either get a test done or just listen to your body. And then the final thing, one of your favorite things is mindset. Mm -hmm. There is, I swear you guys, nothing more important than mindset, because if you don't believe that things will work, if you don't believe you have the power to change how you experience your life, you won't try anything right? You'll, you'll just be like, throw up your hands and go, oh, well, I'm getting older. It's going to suck, you know? Yeah. And then you just accept that, you know, yeah. versus saying, no, I'm going to age gracefully. And, you know, I was at a health food store one time and there was this man next to me. I was looking at different tinctures of mushrooms, uh, mm -hmm. you know, reishi and shaga and whatnot. And he was next to me and we just got to chatting and I would have, if I would have guessed he was in his sixties, if I had to have guessed, well, him and I got into a little conversation about, uh, reishi and how amazing it was for anti-aging. Well, he ended up telling me he was 92 years old. What? Like, what? <laughs> what? He's like, he goes, it's all about your mindset. Wow. He said functional mushrooms are amazing because, you know, they come from the earth and, and they're, you know, they're so revitalizing and whatnot. And so I started to incorporate that into my routine. And, uh, and like you said earlier, listen to your body. I, you know, my whole show is about, you know, listening to your intuition, listening to yeah. your body, maybe using tools like muscle testing. If you have a hard time listening to your intuition. Yeah. Yeah. Right. These are things that we can do to help um, help our our, you know, kind of external world tap into our internal world. Right. And so yes. I love that we're talking about this today because, you know, we have been programmed as a society to think that what we see on television is the only way we can manage our health, that we can age, that we can do all these things. But um, newsflash, <laughs> look outside of the box, right? And we absolutely what's best for us. And, uh, you know, so, you know, like Greg said, you know, we're talking about these things today and you may be like, mm, I'm not sure about that. Or if you haven't tried it, try it. That's the way I say it. You know, if you've tried it and you're like, Hmm, that didn't work for me before, but I'm open to learning more about that other topic that they talked about, you know, so mm -hmm. just opening yourself up, you know. To yeah, that's exactly why I have my podcast. And it's, it's just about bringing information into people's awareness that they, a lot of my listeners will write and say, I had no idea about this type of muscle relief that doesn't involve pain meds. I did, you know, I had no idea this, this, this. So we're really just trying to expand people's awareness to have them make the choices, like you said, that feel right for them or to try something. Yeah. And so, you know, I was laughing because when I was reading your bio, you had said that you were your own guinea pig. And I laughed because I was my own guinea pig too. And I still am, you know, to a certain extent. And so, you know, I think, you know, you and I, Greg, we've come together to share some of the tips and tools that have worked for us to save some of y'all some time. So you yeah. don't have to go down that path. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let me save you a few years, let me tell you, and a few dollars. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, Greg, let's talk a little bit about cholesterol because, mm. you know, working in the healthcare industry, 
I saw almost every single doctor tell people that they had high cholesterol, including myself. And I've gone down my own rabbit holes about what I, you know, what my beliefs are around cholesterol, but I'm curious to hear what you have learned about the human body and the role of cholesterol. Such a great topic, especially for women, because the, the, the usual result of somebody being told they have high cholesterol is that they're going to be on a medication called a statin. Mm -hmm. And I did a two-part series on my blog about why statins are not good for women and the types of the, the cases where a woman might be a candidate for a statin, but never for the rest of your lives. I was in the doctor's office with uh, my husband, as a matter of fact, and he wanted to put him on a statin. And we said, no, we're gonna do the lifestyle thing. And my husband said, well, if I were to take it, how long would I have to take it? And he said, oh, it's a lifetime thing. And we asked him about the side effects. And he said, well, you know, generally by the time somebody's 70, if they've been on it since they're 50, they're going to have side effects. And I just thought, have you listened to what you just said? <laughs> like, I'm going to put you in danger, but it's okay because you have this number. So let's talk about why the cholesterol number is so uh, present for doctors. It is true that LDL, the low density lipoprotein, cholesterol can collect in certain people's arteries and cause blockages. It is incorrect to assume that because you have a cholesterol level of 120 or 140 or 160, you will be that person who has that arterial blockage. There are tests that you can get to see whether you have blockages, how much calcification, how much, how small are your arteries or are they healthy? But the problem with cholesterol, uh, the, the fear that they put out there is that cholesterol, first of all, would the body produce something in such great rate, um, amounts if it was bad for us? Exactly. I really don't think so. Now, granted, people would say, well, I have an autoimmune disease. My body's producing too much of something, but it produces it for other people and it's good. I got that. Cholesterol is different. We're not talking about the body turning on itself. We're talking about a natural, healthy substance. So we have the HDL, which is I call the happy happy little cholesterol. It starts in the body, it, it, like little, we call it little dump trucks. It's like the sanitation team. It goes out into the body and scavenges up a bunch of debris and waste materials and puts it back in the liver. The liver detoxifies it or does whatever it does. It sends it back out for the to the body. LDL is, is one that's like a, it's like a salve. Think of if it's driving along the road and it sees a pothole, LDL truck stops and it patches the pothole. And you, you can't get too much cholesterol, LDL or otherwise, from eating food. There is a small increase in certain people who eat uh, cholesterol-rich foods who will see a, a, a slight increase. But you could eat lobster every day with, followed by steak and eggs. You will not necessarily have hypercholesterolemia, which is like 300, 400. That's a familial genetic variation that some people get. The other problem with people saying, well, your total cholesterol is high, is what is your HDL number? I, I tend to have high HDL. Could be my lifestyle choices, could be genetic. But if it's 100 and my total cholesterol is 221, that means my regular cholesterol is only, one, my LDL is only 121. But if you look at the total number, you might freak out. And here's an interesting statistic. When they do autopsies on people that have died of a heart condition, heart failure, any kind. Half have low cholesterol to normal cholesterol, and only half have elevated slightly or otherwise. So kind of like a crapshoot. Statins, however, come with a whole host of side effects, especially, as I said, when they are used long term. So don't fear cholesterol. Get smart about what's going on in your body. Find out whether you have a risk of a damaging artery kind of condition and go from there. But really think twice because you can help your body help get healthy no matter what the condition is through lifestyle. 90% of what is going on in our body, 80 to 90, is caused by our choices, our lifestyle. It is our lifestyle and our mindset around that and what we believe. If, if you know, I, I'm even a firm believer in saying, I, I have this or I am this, you're actually creating that within your mind. And, you know, it yeah. took me a little bit to learn that as well. And so um, I also have another story behind cholesterol. I was married to a pharmaceutical rep for nearly 10 years. So I saw a different side to health mm. and where it was being pushed and why it was being pushed from a marketing standpoint. And so 
when cholesterol started to roll out, it was because there was a certain drug. I'm not going to name it because it <laughs> lagged my show, but there was a certain drug that they wanted to push out into the field. And so they started to change the within normal limits of what mm -hmm. cholesterol was either high or low. And so uh, and you also started to notice me working at a hospital. They started to do biometric screenings every year on employees and staff. And so there was these markers on there specifically for blood pressure and cholesterol. And I saw those markers shift. I remember that year when those markers went down, they shifted. And that was when this particular drug, which is a very famous statin, mm -hmm. and it started to push it out. You see more commercials and you see more things. And they say, if you are in this time, you know, in this frame, and so, you know, pushing that drug and then having a lot of friends who are doctors, having a lot of friends in the pharmaceutical industry, they're like, oh, they would get kickbacks and spiffs because they would get particular monetary reasons for this. So there's there's the health aspect of the cholesterol, but there's also the mar marketing aspect of the cholesterol. And these are things that people don't want to talk about because they don't want to believe that this is going on, you know, in the system. But uh, I saw it firsthand. I was right there, front row and center. And boy, did it really fire me up. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. It's I'll bet, especially somebody with your natural inclination to do things alternatively. Yeah. I interviewed a doctor, uh, Doug Lucas, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, he's on there now. And he said he used to be a, a orthopedic surgeon. And he is now a functional medicine doc. And he said that every hospital which now has all these, you know, umbrellas and little offices and big offices of doctors, they have a quota every month mm -hmm. that they are, I'm going to use encouraged in air quotes to yes. meet for certain prescriptions, procedures, and other uh, things that they would like the hospital because the hospital makes money, of, of course. course. It's a money so, maker. Yeah. 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 So yeah. just be careful. And again, I'm not saying that I'm not saying everybody's going to have a terrible experience with the side effects, but I do know people who can't hear the message. And one of my friends who's about 77, I guess, vibrant, everything was great. The past few years, his, his cholesterol, they have it down to 70. And he now is having tremors yep. in his hands. Mm -hmm. And he said, maybe I'm getting Parkinson's. I said, maybe you should talk to your doctor about the cholesterol medication he's been on for 30 years. Yeah. Right. And he's otherwise good, except now it's, he doesn't walk quite as well. And you could say that that's aging. But I just finished reading a book about um, this doctor who wrote about cholesterol, case study after case study of reversing people getting off statins and reversing all kinds of misdiagnosed issues like Parkinson's, even misdiagnosing MS yeah. because of the statin. Yeah. And, and, you know, my dad, he's weaned himself off of everything, but that statin. And I'm like, all right, dad, let's, let's do some heavy metal cleansing. Let's do some parasite cleansing. Let's remove some toxins. Let's, he's got the diet in place, but I said, let's yeah. try some other things. And he has successfully weaned himself off. And so, yeah. uh, you know, I think a lot of that too is, uh, it's putting toxins into our body that our body naturally can't tolerate. It can tolerate in the beginning, when you're taking it for a few years, but when you're taking it for 20, 30, 40 years, yeah. it's building it up. And like you said, the liver is what is filtering things out. Our kidneys and our liver is filtering things out. And when we get, you know, I working in the organ donation field, working in the operating room, I was able to see livers outside of the body. <laughs> I could see a fatty liver. I knew what that yeah. looked like. I could see the jaundice of the liver. I could see um, hardened kidneys. And uh, these were young people. These were people in their 30s and 40s that were mm. having these issues and ailments. And so, you know, like you had said, a lot of it is our lifestyle and then adding the mindset, you know, behind that and kind of reprogramming ourselves to, to realize that we can change our health through our diet. We can change it through drinking more water. You know, that's even just one easy thing that a lot of people don't do, right? And then our mindset on top of that. Well, yeah. And when you talk about mindset, I think sometimes people think, oh, I have to meditate. Oh, I have to take a special course. <laughs> mindset is as simple as saying, really? Tell me more. Exactly. You're what? changing your mindset. Well, I thought I knew everything I needed to know, but maybe after hearing this conversation, there's another option for me. Maybe there's something I want to learn. And when it comes to your health, you may be very sick listening to this podcast. You may be in chronic pain. You may... If you give up the idea that you can get better, you won't try 
every some people say to me i've when they come to work with me as a coach i've tried everything well i have to say you haven't because we've never worked together right i may have something that you haven't tried so don't ever give up i guess is my point and that's as simple as mindset gets just keep stay in the game to get well ask for whatever you need as many times as you need to ask for it absolutely and it's uh breaking through that programming of what you think might be the only way you can heal. You know, maybe you think the only way you can heal is to take a statin or that's the only way you can lower your cholesterol. Well, there's a lot of options. Burdock root is fantastic. Guggle is fantastic. You know, there's a lot of other natural ways that you can lower your mm -hmm. cholesterol as well. Just go down the rabbit holes, you know, do some research, be a guinea pig like me and Greg, you know, <laughs> do some yeah. things. So Greg, you say that every bite we take or every thought we think is either an investment in our health or a debt that we will have to repay later. And I'd like to talk more about some of the common aging topics like menopause and metabolism. And so I'm in my mid forties and personally, I don't believe in menopause. I don't, I don't believe in it. It's not in my wheelhouse like clockwork. I have a perfect cycle. I have had it since my, my thirties, when I got off birth control, I have had a perfect mm -hmm. cycle. I ovulate perfectly. I could personally, I personally believe I could have a child right now if I chose to have a child. But I also believe that once we clear ourselves of toxins, heavy metals and parasites, and we shift our mindset around things, we can, our body will function properly and positively. And I, I believe that menopause was something that the pharmaceutical industry put out there to for us to believe it was a program placed in our women's minds that we have to move through this and that we'll get it from this age to this age and we'll suffer, you know, with it. But uh, it's funny because I have a lot of friends who believe in it and they're starting to show signs of it where I don't believe in it and I have a perfect, you know, cycle. And so let's talk about this because I love to dive into these topics of um, things that we've been taught at a very young age and how we can shift them and we can change them. And so how do our thoughts affect our hormones and how do our beliefs about things like menopause and metabolism, how can we change that as we age? Well, I think we have to go back in time and rewrite the script. I do really. <laughs> um, and it's interesting you say that you are not experiencing, I'm going to call it perimenopause because of course we have yeah. all of these terms. Mm -hmm. Um, the, I had a hysterectomy, a partial hysterectomy, kept my ovaries when I was 43 because of a fibroid problem. And because I kept my ovaries, I didn't go into instant menopause, you know, and to say that there, you don't believe in menopause is fine. I think what you're really saying for somebody that might be listening and going, but it is a true thing. You but don't believe, thing? Or was it but you don't believe you're going to suffer with the symptoms of what is now called menopause. Mm -hmm. Is that more accurate? Yeah, possibly. But I believe that even the word symptom itself is a negative connotation. It means you're going to be suffering with something. And if you believe that you're in divine alignment with your health, you, you won't, there's no suffering. There's no suffering. There's no symptoms. So aligning yourself with your mindset of, you know, it's like, if you believe that you can't make money. If you grew up thinking you can't make money or you believe that just because you know your mom was sick that you're going to be sick too, it's all a mindset and you're attracting that into your mm -hmm. reality, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm not attracting menopause into my reality and I've got several friends who are doing the same and some of them are in their mid fifties and they haven't experienced any menopausal symptoms. So this is where yeah, I like I... to dive into the mindset aspect of it. Yeah. I, I can't speak to having been that successful with the mindset, but I did when I first started to experience flashing or sleepless nights, I went to my, I had a Chinese medicine doc at the time and I tried every single acupuncture, herbs, whatever. And I couldn't, and I was, I had, I had two jobs. I had a job I was a private chef and I was launching my coaching business online or I had launched, but I was working it. And I had to get it sorted because I had to get it sorted. So I finally went the natural route, but not just herbs and acupuncture. Um, so not to make anybody wrong who is experiencing these things, but I get what you're saying. And I very quickly realized that if I, if I had said, oh, well, this is just the way it is, I would have suffered, quote unquote, longer right? But I knew that my body needed something. And part of what it was, 
to be honest, I had to change how I ate. I had to change some of the food I was eating, not because I didn't necessarily gain weight. I had a little muffin top thing, but I just changed my workout routine and that was fine. But I realized the food that used to agree with me and make me feel good just de-energized me, enervated me. Um, and that's a mindset thing. It's like, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. That's the first mindset piece. I wanted to feel better. And I like being a healthy person. So I agree with you that the mindset is very important. And whether somebody listening is having flashes or whatever, just be open to the fact that you don't have to get medicated and menopause, like I've been reading, it's crazy on Instagram. There's a lot of menopause experts and coaches good on them. And they're talking about it being this huge transition, like, and then there's menopause and that's the rest of your life. And it's like, no, it's like getting your period for the first time, probably had cramps, probably got weepy, probably. And then you got used to it, right? It's just, your body is just going through changes and just embrace it. You ain't going to change it. <laughs> I mean, you know, no, you just, I, I too believe if we, you know, back in my twenties, I started detoxing. I started getting rid of endocrine disruptors in my body. I didn't use plugins in the wall. I wasn't eating, you know, a lot of our dairy products have a lot of antibiotics in it. A lot of hormone. I notice, I, you know, I don't eat a lot of dairy. And when I do my, my breasts get very tender after I eat it. And I know I just <laughs> ate some hormones. And so, you know, at a younger age, I started to stop. Uh, I started to look at my diet and what I was eating and you know, and that could be a reason why it plays into why my cycle is very spot on, you know, mm -hmm. and why I haven't had any of these um, problems, so to speak. And uh, I do feel heavy metal cleansing. I, I, I talk about this all the time on my show. We are bombarded with toxins and heavy metals and parasites in our body. And once we start to eliminate those, our hormones will start to balance themselves out. And many women will notice that when they do heavy metal cleansing, their cycles will come back to normal. They might be infertile and are struggling to have a child. And then they'll do some, some, uh, detoxing, and then they'll also start eating, you know, properly. And then they'll notice, wow. I, I conceived a child and I wasn't able to do that. So there's so many, I call it multidimensional because there's so mm. many ways. It's our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of our detoxing and, mm -hmm. uh, and our, what we, what we take into our body, right? Like you said, what every bite we take or everything we think is an investment or a debt in that. And so just, um, you know, tuning into that and, uh, you and you can reverse it. I think that's the, that's the important thing. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can reverse that. It's, it's putting your intention and putting your energy towards visualizing yourself healthy, you know, and that's huge. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And it's powerful. And when I say that every thought we think is also that way, every thought is as powerful as any bite of food. It, it creates a hormonal cascade. It's just the way we're wired. Emotions create physical realities in the body you know, things get triggered, dopamine, serotonin, all those things are because of our thoughts. And our thoughts and our emotions are tied. If we have a negative emotion, we start thinking negatively, but it's easy to snap. It, I'm not going to say it's easy. It is possible to snap ourselves out of that, to reverse the thinking trend. I recently lost a friend unexpectedly, and I couldn't sleep for a few nights. It was because my mind was racing. I knew every trick in the book. I was breathing, had my lavender oil, but then I realized also, I just had to be okay with that for then. That's how grief was showing up in my brain for that. But then after three days, I literally made a decision. I'm going to take a walk first thing in the morning. I don't care how cold it is. I need to get out in nature. I live in a beautiful area. And I did. I bundled up to the nines because it was about 26 degrees. Out. <laughs> and I walked and I walked and I listened to birds and I just said, okay, I have to release her and I have to release this. So whatever it takes is what I'm saying. Be gentle with yourself. If your mind is racing, you can't get a negative thought out, but then make a decision. It's decision time. Now I have to be done with this. How can I get through it? How can I change my thinking? Because it'll affect your body eventually. It will. And, you know, journaling is great for that. I, that's how I started. I started to journal my thoughts and I began to recognize I had a lot more mm. negative thoughts than I had positive thoughts throughout the day, specifically around my body image, around, uh, my health, around, you know, variety of topics, finances, you know, a whole bunch of things. And I was like, holy cow, the, the programming in my subconscious is pretty 
mean. <laughs> I'm mean girl. myself, right? Pretty yeah. cruel. And so once I began to consciously recognize what my normal autopilot thoughts were, I could cancel them. When they would come up, I would cancel, cancel, stop. Okay, let me reprogram reprogram that with a more positive thought. And as I did that, I noticed I became more in alignment with my authentic self. I became more, um, my body felt better. I wasn't in pain as much. I wasn't feeling, because when you're in, in pain, believe me, when I first moved across the country, I suffered with such debilitating pain. I was almost paralyzed from the legs down. I had to crawl to the bathroom. I couldn't shower. My parents had to come out and take care of me. And I had to only use my mind, only use my mind to get myself out of that. And it took four months <laughs> for mm -hmm. me to do it. And it was one of the most challenging experiences I have ever gone through in my life. But with that said, I was able to shift the vision of myself in pain. And when you're in pain, you just, well, you will do anything to get Absolutely. out of it. I mean, I was at such a point where I even said to my dad, I know why people commit suicide because mm. I am in so much agonizing pain. I can't even use my legs. I can't stand up. I can't even use the bathroom. Like it was horrible. And I. I never thought that those words would even come out of my mouth because mm. I was a very positive person, but I was in such a deep state of pain that I just, I would have taken anything to get myself out of that. And all I could do is lay in bed. And that's when I learned muscle testing. I would muscle test. Okay. What is this? Is this a belief? Is this a thought? Is this energy? Is this physical? Do I need to detox? What do I need to do? Literally boom, boom, boom. And within four months, I was up, I was walking, I was running, I was hiking, I was climbing. So there was a lot of um, thoughts, beliefs in mm -hmm. my mind that were basically clogging me. Like I needed a rotor rooter it. I needed some Drano, <laughs> you know, I needed something, but I was forced to sit in my bed, literally by myself in a brand across the country from my family and figure it out. I had to figure it out. And that's all I had was me. And I figured it out. And I figured out a lot of it was my thoughts, a mm -hmm. lot of it. And mm -hmm. so that's why I'm such a, a big believer on mindset, because personally, I've had that experience where I had to take myself from such debilitating pain out of it into a state of vitality and health. And so, yeah. Um, and that's my testimonial, you know, that's really my <laughs> testimonial. And so Greg, can you tell us a little bit more about the services that you provide and how you're helping people move through some of these changes in aging? <laughs> Thanks for asking. So basically all coaching is life coaching. So it may say that I do health coaching, healthy aging coaching. I started as a life coach, many things followed certifications, weight loss, whatever it is, but truly the best work that I do with anybody is to help them with their beliefs, to help them. And also to, as I call it, tell the ugly truth. Sometimes people throw their hands up. There's nothing I can do. I've tried everything. When in fact, they haven't really identified exactly what they're doing in this moment that could easily be changed or not, maybe not even easily, but it's possible to replace them with something else. So I work with people as a coach, I have a simple assessment on my uh, services page that just helps people identify you are here. You know, you go to the mall and there's a little box, you are here. Where are you in your aging journey? What's working? What's not working? And it's a, a little question, maybe 10 questions, and then we have a 45-minute call. And that's the best place to start. Some people are amazed. They're like, wow, I'm really doing well and I feel good. Okay, great. See you later. Some people think, oh my gosh, I'm in pain. I'm a pre-diabetic. What am I going to do? I don't know how to start. Then we go to the next level, the next step, which is usually uh, some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Great. And so how can people reach you? How can they contact you? Well, they should go to rebelliouswellnessover50.com. <laughs> I have all of my things there. And I'm on Instagram as rebelwell50. And um, I post my podcast there. My podcast is also on all the, you know, all the platforms and the, the, you know, you're talking about toxins. I have um, a free report that I did on obesogens, which is what you were talking about, the chemicals that are in our everyday appliances and our sofas, our floor, you know, and it talks about how that affects the endocrine system, and especially for women with um, weight loss. I don't think it's on my website as a freebie right now, but if somebody listening would be interested in learning more about how 
these things affect us. Just Gregory at Rebellious Wellness over 50.com. What I do have right now is the power of five up on the website. If people want, I have a five day program. So you learn one day is about fat, one day is about protein and how to use. So a little practical tip at the bottom of how to incorporate these things into your day to day. Cause I find that information alone doesn't usually cut it, right? We need to like, show me how to use it, Greg. <laughs> yes. I hear you. It's like, I, I, I'm very visual myself. So it's like, okay, show me how to use it. I can read about it, but I'd like to, you know, to, to see and to learn and, you know, stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. Greg, is there anything else that you feel that you'd like to share that maybe we haven't touched on in the show that would be relevant to the listeners? I think just what, to your point where you started and we've touched upon it again, but is really be open. Don't let your friends and your family and your workplace, whatever wants to take you out of your inner knowing that's saying, follow this person, or let me learn more about, or buy this book, or I want a coaching session, whatever, or a tapping session with Tonya. Don't let people talk you out of that unless it's going to kill you. And most of the stuff that we recommend is not going to kill you. We're trying to help you. <laughs> Give it a try. I mean, I have, I have swimming with whales on my thing. I want to do an LSD journey. You know, I have all these crazy things on my to-do list and I'm in my mid sixties. I got to get going. I think maybe swimming with a whale could kill me if it was a mean whale, but you know what? I'm, I'm here for the, I'm here for the experience. What we're talking about is a lot safer and a lot saner. So just don't get talked out of it. Listen to your intuition. Yes, I agree with you on that, Greg. Just feel into your body. And I even say that with practitioners. If if your energy is telling you something feels off, listen to that. It's your gut instinct. It's telling yeah. you that. And if you feel a pull towards someone, listen to that. There's a reason why, you know, our energetic system is picking up on things prior to our physical, you know, body. And so oftentimes that's its way of uh, communicating with us. So don't um, just poo poo it, you know, and push it to the yeah. side. There's a reason that it's communicating with you. Absolutely. And so Greg, I appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing all of your knowledge and wisdom when it comes to all of these um, kind of touchy topics, right? Being rebellious <laughs> with our health, uh, going against the grain when it comes to cholesterol and mm -hmm. uh, you know all of these things that uh, can be difficult for some, some of us to wrap our heads around. And you know, if you've listened this long and you've gotten this far into the show, then uh, uh, you know, I, I, I praise you because you've been open-minded enough to kind of listen to what we've had to share today. And uh, I appreciate all of you listening and all of you watchers out there. And I appreciate you, Greg, for coming on the show and uh, bringing the energy into the world. It's not really easy to, um, as a woman too, to stand out there and say, hey, I'm aging and this is what I'm yeah. learning. And I've had some really difficult times, but I've also had some really great times too. And so thank you so much for uh, being a beautiful, vibrant woman out there, just sharing your knowledge and wisdom with others. <laughs> thank you, Tonya. And for you, for all the work you do. I really appreciate being in your energy and thanks for having me on the show. You deserve to navigate your life in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.TheExistentialEmpath.com.